All right, second try. I hope now everybody can hear me. Everyone, welcome to IDM on site. Today, a little bit later, due to the time difference of um, our guest, very, very data is joining us today. He's a professor at the history and geography at Ion Kriyanga State Pedagogical University in Chisinau, former vice president of the Action and Solidarity Party, which is ruled by Maya Sandu, former prime minister of uh, Moldova, and currently in Stanford, a bit limited in the possibilities that he can do. Sergio, good morning on your side, and thank you very much for joining us. Good evening on your side, and thank you so much for the invitation. So it's a great occasion to see each other and to share some idea being in quarantine. <laughs> uh, speaking about quarantine, you are in a different continent. Your family is back in uh, Moldova, respectively, um, in, in Romania. Um, how is the situation at the moment, um, you being there and your family being back at home? You know, I'm traveling a lot. It's not for the first time when I'm in the United States for a couple of months and my family remain in Europe. So, um, But the situation of coronavirus, of course, uh, it's, uh, pro it's a new provocation and uh, everyone is stressful somehow because not just being on different continent and doing your job. Um, so being in quarantine and this um, invasion of statistics and uh, many death cases, of course, somehow we are under a huge pressure and thinking about the future and thinking about how to manage the situation. That's why it's a little bit strange because it's something bad or wrong is happening at home uh, of my parents or, or, or of my relatives. I will not be able to travel. This is um, a little bit stressful. And of course, um, uh, each of us is thinking uh, how to do, how to manage and to survive uh, this uh, strange situation. Can you tell us a bit more about measures that have been taken in the Republic of Moldova? We are here now in Austria in our uh, fourth week starting of, of isolation. Um, IDM is closed, continues to be closed for the foreseeable uh, future, at least for this month. Um, what are the measures that are undertaken in, in Moldova to contain the spread? Yeah, of course, uh, being in the uh, United States anyway, I'm, I'm looking, I'm checking the news from Moldova, I'm trying to be informed what they are doing, what uh, they are trying uh, or how they are trying to manage this uh, crisis. Uh, I think uh, our government, uh, of course, uh, is trying to do uh, the best what they can do, but they uh, were not ready to, to, to manage such uh, uh, risks and such uh, such uh, situation um, and that's why the activities the, the um, what they're trying to do the plan of activity it's very much criticized by the opposition and by the by, by the citizens and declaration what they're saying every day uh, are not so much encouraging so uh, even the, the the communication tools are not so good uh, uh, developed um, so they established this situation uh, currently a little bit late and one month ago uh, they did the elections uh, in one circumscription in uh, near to Kishina in Hinchesh uh, district uh, because it yeah. was one place in the parliament free uh, and already people in, uh, in Europe uh, uh, established some strong rules to control, to limit uh, the, the the, uh, the, the movement mm -hmm. of people, but they did the elections and after that two villages from these districts uh, were under quarantine yeah. because uh, they discovered uh, many cases in this area. So I think this was the first big mistake. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the Socialist Party uh, won the, 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 the place, yeah. the new, another place in the parliament. Uh, they succeed, probably they expected like this, but um, uh, it's not good because uh, it's, uh, the elections could be postponed like in many other countries or in many other uh, cities have been done in this uh, situation. And then they established the, the, this special uh, committee uh, for management uh, of the crisis uh, and no one uh, doctors are included or no one specialist in virusology are included in this uh, committee. So just politicians, but just bureaucrats from the government and no one, even the Minister of Health, she's not mm -hmm. uh, a doctor mm -hmm. uh, by background, she's a lawyer. And 
And uh, in such situation, I think uh, we have to invite the real experts mm. who really understand the, the situation, who really understand the problem and could suggest the efficient uh, measures. That's uh, some decisions I think are um, uh, some uh, are out of uh, strictly ne necessity. Um, but citizens' opposition is trying to, to, to uh, look on decisions and trying not just to criticize, but to do the proposals. Um, so the, they established uh, uh, some new places uh, uh, for quarantine or for these uh, uh, people who are suspected to be uh, contaminated, uh, but it's very slowly. And of course, the, our hospital and the, the, the medical system in general is not ready. Uh, and now everyone is saying, ah, you see, uh, the last three decades we didn't invest in the medicine. That's why we have such bad situation. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's bad, but also it's uh, a, a case to discuss why we have such uh, bad situation in the medical system and how we could improve. Why we didn't improve, of course, they didn't pay attention, they didn't invest. Uh, and probably that's why we have, I think, the highest rank in the world of contaminated doctors and medical personnel. Okay. So, um, uh, I think, uh, just let me check, over 240 people from uh, around uh, 1,000 contaminated or already confirmed uh, people. So, 240 are doctors and people from the hospital who are working right. as assistants, uh, so which is, I think, uh, one third or one quarter of, of the total number, uh, which is very yeah. high, and that's meaning that our system was not ready. They didn't have enough uh, uh, equipment, adequate uh, equipment, and even the doctor probably at the beginning didn't pay attention to this uh, virus being so uh, uh, so dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to uh, be critical from all, all points of view and to try to analyze why. Uh, it's happened like this. So, for example, in some hospitals, uh, uh, I think two thirds of the personnel is contaminated, like in Soroka district, uh, or like in other uh, in uh, Stefan Vode district. And these two cities are already uh, under full quarantine as a, as an administrative place itself, because we have this not just Kishinev as the main area of the main uh, many cases or the highest uh, number of uh, of people, but these two regional uh, uh, districts, hospitals and cities are also of the high number of uh, contaminated people. In Stefan Vode, for example, uh, it was a source from uh, from Kiev just three weeks ago, I think, or, or at least, um, one full bus of people visited uh, uh, Pochayev Monastery in Kiev, and they uh, imported uh, the virus from Kiev. Uh, and this is confirmed also in, in uh, the monastery, because uh, the monks from the monastery already uh, are in the hospital. So it's clear that this way the source of infection. Um, if you will look to the statistics, of course, we have to be very careful, because um, you know, uh, people. Uh, some people are very uh, affected by these statistics by increasing the number of infected people. Uh, but also, we have to analyze the capacity of testing uh, the people. So, uh, the, the government declared that they have the capacity to do uh, up to two thousand tests per day, but mm. they are not doing. For three days ago, they did around six hundred. Uh, three days ago, two days ago, they did it just uh, three hundred. And uh, today they did it less than 200 tests, so uh, it's mm -hmm. nothing. And from, for example, today we have another 109 cases from less than 200 mm -hmm. tests. So half of the tests are positive, which is, and this is very yeah. stressful. And this is, of course, showing that um, that the, if, if we will do more tests, of course, we will have more. Uh, positive uh, uh, cases, which is of course dangerous and it's it's very uh, stressful for, for everyone. And um, government is trying to do something. Um, they prepared for new uh, some some new places in Kishinev, around Kishinev. They are trying to reorganize the hospitals and also to to bring doctors from one area to another one to help each other. Um, so it's some kind of solidarity between the doctors, but. Another decision which was totally uh, unclear, they, uh, so the, just, uh, I think, 10 days ago, um, uh, the, the, the 
chair of the Rep Republican Hospital, the biggest hospital in Moldova, uh, just this uh, emergency commission decided he is not good and they just replaced him from the position. And he's mm -hmm. famous doctor. He was, uh, he has a very impressive background. He was working in Germany for a long uh, time and returned to Moldova, I think, five years ago on this position. And he did a great job. And we don't know exactly what was the real uh, argument to replace him. Uh, but the official were uh, one of the, the uh, speculation around this decision because he accepted uh, to do the test of the four doctors supposed to be infected in private uh, lab, mm -hmm. uh, and they uh, confirmed positively. So, uh, and uh, because uh, some people from the commission said that they allow to do the test just in uh, the national lab, it's a it's a national agency to do so. Uh, uh, and I think it's very st strange decision because as a manager, I think he proceed very correctly. If they were suspected, let's do as fast as possible the test and to, to be to have the clear picture. And uh, actually they did the cases confirm and just isolated the the, uh, the, the, the personnel. And the reaction of, of some guys from those four uh, was just why? Because he did great job. And then just last week, the uh, week, the full government did the tests in the private uh, lab too. So it's. I think you could see by such uh, examples we could see that that they probably are too much stressful, but also they are not able to have a very calm attitude to every cases and to be very careful uh, uh, when they are taking one or another mm -hmm. decision. And uh, of course, the, the reaction of the citizens it's it's very uh, not aggressive but against such decisions. So uh, because people are um, uh, expecting to have. Um, professional approach and to encourage society and to try to to to, to bring people together um, okay not together to, to stay close to each other but together in sense to to um, to try to unite the yeah. efforts and from another point of view citizens itself some citizens or many citizens are not uh, respecting mm. the rules um, so the government established some uh, penalties, so if uh, you are not respecting the rules, uh, you, you have to pay more than 1,000 euro. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't work. And now, more or less, relation of the uh, churches uh, of Moldovan uh, uh, metropoli, it's more or less calm. But uh, one week ago, uh, they said we will not step, uh, stop the religious service because we have to do, and the virus is just, I don't mm. know, it's mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, and finally they stopped and uh, some of them are doing, um, of course, it's, it's very strange because the uh, priests from the churches are not taking seriously uh, the situation. Uh, and even the, 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 the chair, the metropolit of, uh, uh, of Moldova metropoli, didn't react uh, in this situation to stop. Uh, so that's why I think many cases, infected cases, uh, come uh, through this uh, uh, religious service uh, which we, uh, they did uh, one or two weeks mm -hmm. ago. Um, so you could see uh, people who were believers and uh, people and priests uh, have a, a different attitude in such uh, crisis situation, which is meaning that we do not have uh, very well understanding on uh, uh, risk management. Right. So uh, and uh, risk management plans how to react in different situations. We didn't talk so much about. And that's why people, ah, it was like before, it's nothing uh, seriously. So after so, uh, so many cases of contamination, uh, after some people who have relatives being in the hospital, seeing the real situation there, so now, ah, so they're understanding it's very, uh, some people are doing lives from the hospitals uh, and saying about the real situation there, that the, the doctors, are not giving uh, the, them clear picture how they are treated, mm -hmm. who is responsible for the treatment. Some of them are not, uh, uh, that they do not have real or uh, extreme necessities uh, like uh, uh, warm water to, 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 yeah. to, to make a shower or something like this, which is um, so discovering nothing new, but um, well, probably now it's a massive uh, uh, expressive attitude and then finally we will understand uh, that we need a real uh, health reform in, in the Republic yeah. of Moldova and 
just to end of this part of the uh, answer to your question, um, government uh, and this uh, ex uh, emergency committee uh, did some uh, strange decisions uh, during last uh, couple of days, uh, which of course provoke negative attitude of the citizens. For example, they decided to um, allocate a uh, couple uh, hundreds of thousand of lei for doing uh, new medals for the veterans of the Second World War for 9 of May of this occasion of 75 mm -hmm. years. Which I think is not extreme necessi necess necessity mm -hmm. to, to, to do a new medal, additional one for many others to, to give uh, to these veterans. They have more other needs and especially in this situation probably we don't have to spend the money for this no value uh, medal. And also they decided to do uh, some uh, restoration work on this memorial victory in Kishinev. Uh, okay, again, uh, of this occasion of 75 years of the uh, end of Second World War, which is not extreme necessity. This monument was restored three years ago. Why? And they spent a couple of millions of lei. So from one point of view, they, send, uh, they said that we do not have enough resources and they called people to donate and they created a fund and launched this campaign of fundraising, inviting people to donate. And from another point of view, they are just distributing the money for some activities which are not extremely necessary. And also uh, last week we have seen that um, some local public administration uh, established a competition to buy some new cars, uh, which are very uh, expensive, uh, around or maybe more than 30,000 euro per car. Why in this crisis situation to buy the new car for public administration? And this is the reason. Or uh, some uh, also public institution uh, launched a competition to buy some carpets uh, uh, in the office. So I think people are not understanding what crisis it is, and they cannot be concentrated and to focus the whole resources in one uh, common plan of activities mm. to fight and to, to concentrate the resources. So that's why I think the activities uh, are going so slow and every day uh, briefing and uh, press conferences b done by the, the Prime Minister and the, by Minister of Health just saying about statistics. So nothing about the measures, nothing about the improvements or nothing about the ink. Just saying let's let's uh, respect the rules, let's try. So I think they uh, have a big problem of the uh, PR too. Uh, so public relations, it's, it's very uh, undeveloped and they cannot um, say something. And I think the biggest problem in the Republic of Moldova at, at the moment, it's our president. Because every day he's saying stupid things. Um, so uh, just a few days ago, he said, I, I could consider myself as a doctor already. So I think it's not... Uh, 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 decisions. It, sounds, it sounds familiar a bit, yeah? Doesn't that also happen in the US? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I'm discussing with so my colleagues and uh, neighbors about the Trump, I said, we have our small Trump. Because exactly what he's saying is Trump in another uh, parameters, but exactly in the same way he's saying our president too. So it's... Okay. Um, so I, I don't need to ask you what you think about the uh, government, because I think you have answered that uh, already. But I want to pick up something that you mentioned. So there was this by-election. Um, and... Uh, Uh, people um, have been very contaminated with the virus during that election. And now uh, there is a presidential election uh, upcoming in, in autumn. And um, yep. just the last election in 2016, the Constitutional Court said that the regulation that the parliament is electing the president is unconstitutional. Um, so yeah. there was a direct election of the president. Um, now, you were part of that electoral campaign for, for Maya Sandu. Um, you uh, were vice president of, of the um, PAS party um, and had first-hand experience during that electoral campaign. Um, now, while we can't debate the, um, the, the, the political influence on the on the constitutional court that is obvious in various occasions throughout the last years. My um, question would be, there are now discussions coming um, also from the side of the current government, uh, where Igor Dodon, the current president, is also 
uh, the former head of the Socialist Party, to transfer back... But, but un unofficially, he is still ruling the party. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, <laughs> you, are more, you have more insight to that than, than I uh, do in that case. So, but now the discussions are to transfer the uh, electoral uh, system back to parliament in yeah. order to avoid another spread of the virus. Um, now, you showed the situation that currently the government measures are not very popular amongst parts of the population. So is this something to prevent that um, the popular vote would probably risk that Io Dodon will not be re-elected? Um, so is, is the rule of law again also being quarantined by this or, or is it a practical um, thing to do and say, well, it makes sense in these times? Yeah, you're perfectly right. And actually, your question contained uh, the, the, the part of my answer. Uh, exactly. Four years ago, uh, it was a strange decision. Uh, many people, even uh, specialists in constitutional law, uh, criticized the decision of constitutional court and said that this decision is un unconstitutional because just uh, by one const uh, constitutional court decision to say that uh, our constitution is wrong, I think it was uh, a very simple approach. But then finally, because they control the power, they control the constitutional court, uh, the decision was approved and they uh, uh, choose uh, the, the best way for them uh, to launch new presidential campaign by general election. And then finally they succeed. So it was a... Um, um, good experience for our party too to participate so maya sandu was uh, uh, the the candidate which was very close to to win the elections we suppose uh, in some cases we really uh, we have the information that they uh, uh, falsified the results uh, during the last uh, so because the the, the uh, number of votes in favor of the, the don was very small and you you know we discuss about the campaign and how they bring uh, uh, citizens from transnistria yeah. very well organized to vote and and many other uh, strange and against the, the election law uh, happened during this campaign uh, even some declarations uh, of the politi politicians or some uh, people from the uh, uh, metropoli of moldova against maya sandu against uh, uh, human rights and finally but anyway and after that uh, maya uh, asked to the court and she, uh, she succeed but okay uh, so uh, now um, so we are in front of the new elections and of course uh, uh, this uh, coronavirus situation uh, it's influencing all political decisions some politicians are trying to, to uh, postpone uh, the discussions it's not the time but some are trying to to, to touch uh, and to, to see the reaction of people. And that's why two uh, or three, few days ago, uh, Dmitry Diakov uh, uh, from the Democrat mm. Party, not from the Socialist Party, he posted in his Facebook page, on his Facebook page, the short message that in these circumstances, maybe it's a case to return back to the parliamentary, uh, to elect the, the president in the parliament. And uh, uh, the reaction was very negative. That's why the next day the, the um, president of the Democrat Party, Philippe, said it's, uh, he is not supporting the idea of Diakov and he is uh, uh, not in favor of, of this idea to, to be developed. But Diakov, uh, I just launched the, 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 this, uh, the idea to be publicly discussed and then we will see. So uh, it's, it's just to testing the, the, uh, the society. Uh, but you are perfectly right. Uh, Dodon is uh, afraid that he will not win uh, the new mandate. Uh, and we could see the reaction, his reaction, uh, and also representatives of the Socialist Party reaction uh, against uh, our uh, uh, citizens who are working abroad, against our diaspora, who is trying now to return back to Moldova. And uh, they are, uh, the representatives of the Socialist Party said that they have to stay there. Uh, because uh, we don't have uh, uh, enough capacity to treat all of them. Uh, before, they didn't pay so much attention to Moldova. They left the country, and now they remember that they have the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the homes. So, uh, uh, and I think it's, it's because, uh, of course, these declarations are against constitution, Moldovan constitution, against human rights. They are Moldovan citizens. They have the right to come back. 
and Moldovan government, Moldovan state has to pay attention and to bring and to protect the, the, the Moldovan citizens. So such declarations, I think, are totally unresponsible, but they are coming because they are afraid uh, for the next presidential elections and the most, uh, uh, the biggest part of the diaspora uh, are not uh, supporters of the Socialist Party. So that's why they now are trying to test different uh, uh, scenario uh, for the future elections. And why not? Because they control the biggest part of the parliament together with the Democrats. So uh, we will see, but I think uh, uh, it's not the case uh, to turn back. Even if the decision from 2016 was very strange, and even, for example, the Communist Party at that time, they declared this decision is un unconstitutional, and they invited Communist electorate to participate. They didn't uh, uh, propose own candidates, so the Communists at that time said that it's totally unconstitutional, and they do not recognize this change and this uh, decision to do general election uh, of the president. Now... Uh, of course, uh, um, by this declaration is just a new provocation for the, the debates in the society, which is not the case, I think. Um, and uh, we could see the statistics still today. For, for example, just uh, yesterday, Moldovan border uh, uh, crossed a little bit less than 2,000 people and uh, 1,350, something like this, um, of people uh, sign uh, own declaration that they will buy uh, the insurance. That's meaning about 1,500 people just yesterday, yesterday coming from abroad without medical insurance. That's meaning that they uh, were in different countries around the world and now returning back to Moldova. And this is another decision uh, which was very debated in Moldova uh, just last week. This uh, emergency committee decided that um, people could be boarded uh, uh, on the planes just in case if they have medical insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it was very debated. And finally, they canceled this decision, but they introduced this own or uh, self-declaration that during next 72 hours, they will uh, buy uh, uh, Moldovan insurance to have this insurance uh, to be treated in case or just to have it. So uh, it's another, I think, uh, okay, we have to discuss about the efficiency of the uh, health uh, and the take care uh, system, but to uh, require and to be, uh, to establish this rule, you are not allowed to board on the plane without medical insurance. I think it's a little bit against uh, human rights and just uh, uh, against your uh, citizens to move from one country uh, to Especially your homeland. Especially since so Moldova think, uh, has such a huge uh, percentage of their population working abroad. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so unofficially we know that we have uh, 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 around one million of Moldovans working in different countries around the world. So uh, how many of them will return back now? Uh, probably the, the people who are working seasonally or uh, for, for short times or people who uh, lose the jobs and they do not have uh, enough money to pay uh, rent of the house and they could not see the future uh, uh, to stay longer uh, in these countries and it's better to return back uh, at home. So this is the life and we have to accept to this. Uh, of course, are allowed to come back to, to the homeland. Mm. Maybe we we can uh, talk a bit more also the, the uh, party structures in, in Parliament, because I'm not sure if every one of our viewers is aware of the political situation in Moldova. So right now um, we have a, at least in theory, technocratic government that um, is backed by the Socialist Party and also the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party... Just very, rec <laughs> yeah, very recently uh, invited to... to, to to rule the yeah, government, I, yeah. I'll try to paint a picture and you correct me where I was wrong. So the, yeah, please. the, the Democratic Party used to rule um, the country, especially with um, Vlad Plahotniuk in the background for the last uh, couple of years. And yep. in the last election in February 2019, an election came into being with the more pro-Russian Socialist Party and the pro-European Akum Bloc, which the PAS party is a part of it. And Maya Sandu became prime minister, but then she lost a vote of no confidence. Yeah. So can you clear that up a bit, what, what, what happened there um, and, and how the situation developed politically 
And maybe then it becomes also more clear why right now there are discussions to transfer back the election of the president to the parliament. So uh, actually, you pointed very well. So the last year in February, we had general elections. And as a result, no uh, uh, political party has a chance to uh, win the majority. Uh, that's why the, it was a long process of discussion, the, uh, the coalition. Um, so one scenario was the coalition between Democrats and Socialists. And actually, they progress in the discussions. Uh, we have seen some uh, um, videos, uh, short videos of discussion, the Don and, and Plahotniuk. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, uh, another scenario was to establish uh, uh, the, the coalition between uh, socialists and the uh, uh, pro-European uh, uh, bloc, uh, by, uh, done by two parties, DA and PAS. Um, and finally, so in June they succeed, you know, after three months uh, of discussions, just during the last day, I think uh, by involvement of the EU representatives, uh, United States, including Russia, and maybe Romania participated in these discussions, somehow they convinced both uh, um, political blocs to uh, unite uh, efforts and to uh, create the coalition against Democrats and against uh, Plahotniuk uh, control. So they succeed. Uh, everyone was uh, septic, uh, skeptical uh, on this uh, block. Uh, ma many critiques against uh, uh, block uh, Akum, why they accepted to, to establish the coalition. But it was very clear: if you would like to uh, escape uh, from Demo Democrats' control, let's let's do something. But it was very clear that this coalition would not be so uh, sustainable. And uh, Maya Sandu became prime minister, uh, and in the government, a uh, few places were. Uh, under socialist uh, representatives and another from a uh, bloc, uh, political bloc, Akum. Uh, and during the next five months, they uh, started to do a lot of things. I think very good, but uh, to re-establish the normal activity of the ministries, to re-establish the normal activity of the different uh, uh, state bodies, which was not so easy. And uh, also uh, very difficult discussions uh, were around uh, uh, new uh, constitutional court members uh, and how it was uh, the elective process and it was very difficult. And finally, uh, socialists speculated something and they uh, changed and they elected the, the people who they uh, want. Uh, another difficult case uh, was around, and I think this was the main uh, turn uh, point, and the, the, the collapse of Maya Sandu government, the elections of the new General Prosecutor of the Republic of Moldova. Uh, according to the new law, according to the, the, the procedure which they established, who has to nominate the candidates and so on and so on. Um, and finally, it was a misunderstanding between uh, government, between Maya Sandu and the president. And uh, the socialists uh, used the, the situation, this critic situation, just to vote uh, against the Maya Sandu government. Uh, and it was demonstration that they are not interested so much in the real reforming the prosecutor, the, the uh, legal system, but just to control some key positions. Uh, and after five months, they just voted, the parliament voted together with the Democrats. At that time, Democrats voted against Maya Sandu and the Bloc Akum uh, government uh, because it's understandable why. Uh, and they didn't... Uh, uh, ask some places in the parliament, they just supported the idea. So it was not established a new coalition. It was some kind of so-called uh, temporary government supported by the majority, but unofficial majority because the majority was not uh, uh, as a result of negotiation and establishing the coalition. So after that couple of months, uh, this spring, um, so end of uh, winter, uh, the Dem Democrats signed the agreement with the Socialists and they, they established the government coalition between Socialist Party and Democrats and uh, Democrats uh, uh, win some places in the, the, in the government. Uh, actually four uh, places in the government and um, they said after uh, the presidential elections they will revise the uh, structure of the government and probably uh, they will uh, have the, the position of the prime minister and uh, uh, or maybe the position of the president of the parliament. So you you have to take in account after presidential mm -hmm. elections. So probably presidential elections are very important for the future political coalitions in Moldova. And that's why 
uh, this uh, agreement between Democrats and Socialists, uh, let's say it, it's temporary, mm -hmm. and after uh, presidential elections uh, will be revised. And that's why probably Democrats, or one leader of the Democrats uh, said a few days ago that uh, one scenario is to come back uh, to the uh, to elect the president in the parliament. So they are trying to so that find the solutions, solutions to maintain the control of the, the presidential uh, position. Um, so somehow uh, between uh, socialists and Democrats uh, in the future to control the power and to rule the country. So would you think so, that uh, the, the Democratic Party would support, or at least parts of, 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 of the party would support, that it will be transferred back to the parliament? Because then they don't need to um, have an open candidate running against the Don, and so they will be rewarded afterwards? They don't have a chance. Okay, they have chance to, to nominate own candidate, but they don't have chance to, to win. Yeah. And we have seen what's happened four years ago when they nominated Marianne Lupu, established, started a huge campaign. But after a couple of weeks, they have seen that mm, no chances and they stopped and stepped back. Uh, and declared that they will support the pro-European candidate, which is not true because we know and officially they uh, invited the, the local uh, uh, Democrat leaders to uh, convince uh, citizens to vote uh, for the Don. Mm -hmm. And then finally, unofficially, they supported because we have seen TV campaigns, everything uh, in favor of the Don and against Maya Sandu. So nowadays, I think it's the same situation. Um, Even uh, uh, or after this uh, uh, losing the power, losing control, they don't have chance to, uh, I think, win the position in the parliament if they will have another. So according to the uh, uh, surveys, we could see that they are on the limits or maybe less uh, under the, the limit to, to pass um, uh, in the parliament. So uh, nowadays, I think to maintain the position uh, to rule the country, they have to be in the coalition of the socialists. So that's why they will play the game which will propose a socialist party or they will establish the, the common scenario. Because just being together, uh, they could uh, uh, maintain the position uh, in the parliament and in the uh, government. And will um, PAS and DA find a common candidate or um, will they have problems to continue working uh, together? Um, You have seen some declarations because I'm already for, for more than three months uh, out of my colleagues, just uh, some, some uh, pass will have own candidate and uh, Da uh, Nastas said that they will have own candidate and other parties also are uh, looking to, to nominate the candidates. So the um, pro-European right uh, side electorate, it's very divided, mm -hmm. which is not good uh, because uh, uh, the left uh, uh, electorate, it's more uh, united than, than the right one. Um, somehow they have to... to To, to talk to each other and to find the best solution. At the moment, not because I was uh, uh, very close to Maya Sandu, but according to the statistics, according to the general political situation, I think the best candidate from the right side is Maya Sandu, and she has the chance uh, to compete with Dodon and to succeed, if they will not falsify again uh, the elections. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about... Um The internal politics, um, I want to um, take a step out and environment. Um, we've talked about pro-Russian, pro-European. It's, it's very complicated. So black and white, um, as, as most things are in life and especially in politics, um, when we look at the Republic of Moldova, um, we have seen that... Uh, in 2014, we had the visa liberalization, we had the association agreement, the DCFTA with the European Union, deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. Um, we have now, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, two thirds um, of options between Moldova are going into the single market of the European Union, which has basically reversed the situation yeah. as it has been um, 10 or, or 15 or 20 years ago. Um, But what yeah. we also can see that there is a, a shift um, uh, with, which, which starts very skeptical towards 
the European Union. And now if we look at the current situation, again, we see um, not only in, in, in Moldova probably, um, but in also within the European Union that from the side of the Russian Federation, it's very well handled that they are supporting countries in that difficult situation, that they are helping um, the countries, whereas the European Union, again, is perceived as being divided, slow, um, not look, looking to, uh, to its neighbors, not fulfilling compromise, uh, uh, promises. And um, there's a lot of fake news also going around that I have seen um, that, that are coming, especially on the, on the Russian media outlets, uh, that uh, the EU is on the brink of collapse, um, that, that the virus is man-made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how is this perceived in Moldova, and how is that going to shape uh, probably the, the political orientation of the country in the, in the near future? So actually, you pointed very well. Uh, uh, it's very uh, difficult situation now, and uh, Russia, unfortunately, speculating around this uh, uh, crisis situation and so-called uh, help and this uh, support coming from from Russia to different countries, even to Italy. It was already demonstrated that it's not so useful, like it was declared before. And in Moldova, their support is very. I, actually, I can say it's nothing because they donated just ten thousand tests and nothing more comparatively with other supports uh, coming from uh, different other organizations and states, which is much bigger and is much uh, useful, different uh, equipment or different uh, uh, amount of money uh, for uh, managing the, the, for improving the management of the crisis. So uh, I think Russia is just uh, using the chance to demonstrate that you see we are a great country and we support everyone uh, which needs uh, support in such uh, situation, but we have to be very careful uh, uh, with this uh, support and uh, to compare with the real situation in Russia, with declaration of the um, how they managing the, the situation of the coronavirus uh, in Russia itself, uh, what situation it is in Moscow, the medical system, what uh, are saying the doctors from different hospitals. So we could see that in Russia it's not so well like they are trying, like the official propaganda is trying to say. So uh, mass media already you have uh, you know very well that the declaration of the EU representatives uh, concerning the fake news coming uh, um, from Russia or the increasing of the fake news from Russia. Uh, Moldova it's under this uh, pro Russian propaganda because you know uh, many TV uh, programs, many uh, radio broadcasts, many newspapers are uh, supported by Russia or even are just retranslated uh, in Moldova, and we are under direct influence of the Russian propaganda. Uh, but our um, journalists, our uh, some local uh, broadcasts are trying to, to, uh, to demonstrate or to show uh, the, the reality it, it's different than some programs, Russian programs uh, or Russian news uh, are trying to say. Uh, uh, and, but of course citizens uh, are not so ready to do this critic analysis and to be ready to make the difference between the real news and fake news. That's why uh, I think we are in very uh, difficult situation when we are speaking about the, the influence and the role of Russian propaganda uh, on Moldova and especially nowadays we, uh, when we are uh, on this uh, crisis situation. So it's not so easy to say about the future uh, maybe because the government and especially the president are doing so much mistakes and uh, doing and saying so much stupid things, maybe by this way citizens will say, come on guys, it's time to have another type uh, of politicians, another kind of leaders which are really smart and wants to do something for our country, for our citizens and not to look what uh, uh, Russia is saying and to do like Russia wants. So. Uh, Let's hope, but I think uh, we will have a very uh, difficult uh, uh, election campaign for the presidential position. One last question that I have to ask you, especially also within the context talking about questionable decisions that are taken. Um, we have had already the comparison between the Don and Trump. Um, how, how do you perceive the situation in California right now? How are um, the... The measures there. Um, I mean, you are isolate in isolation. You have to stay in. You can't do your research and your work. 
that you in intended to do. But can you tell us a bit more about how the how the situation on the on the street looks like? Because the numbers that are uh, coming out of the U.S. are frightening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That they, we, we will look the, uh, to the statistic. Of course, the United States is in the first position, and the situation it's not so uh, so good. Um, California, you know, it's a more democratic area, and it's against Trump. I was during the previous elections in California too, so I know exactly the attitude of people when they have uh, uh, seen that the Trump uh, won the elections. Now, of course, it's a very a uh, huge critique and way of critique of Trump and some of my neighbors uh, are doing Trump therapy or anti-Trump therapy uh, because after his uh, daily speeches they are just saying oh my god oh my god what he is saying it's better to, to just to to, uh, to not saying something uh, but in my area so it's you know it's it's very uh, from one city to another one it's very difficult uh, the biggest problem the huge number of uh, infected people are in uh, cities of the millions of inhabitants and uh, somehow i'm uh, we are between because i'm living in uh, some stanford palo alto area and these are two small cities and mostly uh, it's uh, uh, the houses uh, land houses not the blocks so uh, we have just few cases and my neighbor um, uh, she's doctor in the emergency and just yesterday we talk and ask what the situation is so i know from the primary sources uh, and she said uh, now in this uh, area the situation it's very calm it's under control and we have just a uh, uh, few cases uh, and one very important thing what uh, she said we understood from the beginning that this is dangerous virus and we established that we have to be very well equipped and to change the masks after each contact of the i don't know of the, the, the of the citizens just to protect ourselves and people around and that's why it's it's uh, so no infection between the, the medical personnel between the doctors and because not so many cases in the area but uh, two big cities san francisco and san jose there uh, the number is uh, it's very high and it's understandable why because there are living millions of people both cities especially san francisco is very touristic city and just one month ago, so the uh, city uh, was visited by hundred thousand of people around the world. Uh, so that's why uh, the contamination was, um, and also uh, the, the both cities, especially again, especially San Francisco, the streets, the block, close to each other, and people than in 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 our area. So that's why with the United States, you'll see uh, the biggest problem, the highest number are in the, the cities of the millions of inhabitants and especially touristic cities. That's why New York, it's on the first play. Because New York, New York you know, it, it's, it's uh, the, the, the biggest city and the visited city uh, by various tourists around the world. Uh, that's why. But more or less, uh, the, the mayor of the city, it's smart guy and uh, better than, than Trump. And uh, uh, his declarations are encouraging people that uh, they are trying to maintain, uh, to control the situation. And at the moment, they uh, more or less are, are managing the situation. So um, we hope that during next two weeks, um, they will, uh, the, the number of infected will, will come down. Now, according to statistics, it's still going up. But uh, uh, as my, na my neighbor uh, doctor said that uh, uh, they are waiting that next couple of days will be the line. And after that, the, the percentage will, will go down. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, anyway, it's stressful. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in such situation, American society becoming more united. That is specific of uh, uni uh, of American citizenship. Uh, so uh, much responsible in our area neighborhood. So once a week, I'm going to the grocery to buy the stuff, <laughs> and uh, uh, and I'm going by bike, so it's okay. Uh, yeah. So we are allowed to go outside to do uh, a sport, but of course to maintain the distance. And in the market, uh, so we have to wait in the line six foot uh, from one to another one and inside are allowed to go just 
10, 15 people um, to buy your stuff and just to go out. Uh, and also they're using uh, uh, necessary stuff to, to clean and to so. Uh, people are quite polite, uh, trying to be, 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 uh, be, to be very responsible. That's impressed me that um, they are very united. And even in the market, uh, the, the, the personnel, it's very friendly asking, do you need some help? Do you need some, uh, do you look for something else? So um, I think the atmosphere is very calm in our area. I cannot say about all California or in general United States, but in our neighborhood, I think it's more or less very calm. People, some people are going to work probably in the private companies uh, because I, I'm, I'm seeing that the cars on, on the street, not so many like it was before, uh, but people are moving, people are trying to, to uh, work at home. So I think at the moment it's not um, house, yes. which is good. So, Sergio, thank you very much. Um, I hope it stays this way, that you can stay safe, that you can stay healthy. Um, we are looking at two very interesting presidential elections this fall. Uh, it's going to be in, in both, in in both, both countries both where countries. you are um, at the moment and uh, where you are, are coming back um, to hopefully very soon. Um, take care. I am looking forward to um, have the possibility to meet you in person, hopefully in September um, at the latest when we are implementing one of our um, initiatives. And uh, then we hopefully also have the possibility to drink some Moldovan red wine together. Because if the viewers don't know, um, Moldovan red wine is one of the best um, red wines in the world. It's a fantastic, fantastic quality. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to um, see you very, very soon. Say um, all the best uh, to your family and uh, to our viewers that have uh, stayed with us so far. If you liked it, um, click uh, on... Uh, our channel and give us uh, an abo uh, like this video and come back to our uh, next edition that uh, will uh, be announced on our various IDM Vienna social media channels and of course on our website. Sergio, thank you very much. Thank you to you and to your uh, or colleagues and friends. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, discussion. I hope it was useful for, for everyone who is interested. And of course, we will share the video uh, to uh, enlarge the impact of our discussion and to inform people about the real situation in Moldova and the future developments. But let's be optimist that we will uh, pass this uh, situation and uh, we will continue our normal activity and we will develop our uh, planned project and of course we will launch new ideas and a new project too and of course we will uh, have a chance to visit each other uh, to Vienna, to Chisinau and to of course to drink a glass of uh, Moldovan wine all the best to everyone, take care and uh, stay much. at home thank you